Here with us to discuss competing demands at the G20 is CBS News Foreign Affairs Analyst, Pamela Falk, thanks for being with us. Sure, Let's Pally. start with the most recent news this morning, President Obama and Russian President Dmitry Medvedev's meeting and their joint statement that they released together. What's the significance here? Well, it's very important, partly because despite the protests, the U.S.-Russian relationship is very important, and it was very tense after the Georgia conflict. This is an important arms reduction treaty extension, really, because the treaty itself, the START treaty, would have expired in December. And what this does is keep arms reduction going. And it's very important, and particularly because Russia's help will be needed in Afghanistan and in other areas of the world. And, and so it reopens the relationship, which was very hard and tense with Russia. And we have NATO coming up next, so we're going yes. to need a lot of support. Yes, after the G20, the president goes to Strasbourg, France, and the NATO meetings. And the only country that's really probably going to increase boots on the ground is the UK. And the United States both needs Russia and the UK in Afghanistan. That's going to be the principal issue at the NATO summit. Of course, it was also with Hillary Clinton as mm -hmm. Secretary of State in The Hague in their meeting. And uh, that is uh, very important. And I think we've now seen uh, the groundwork for a, a probable success at the NATO meeting. Along that same vein, why is cooperation between Brown and Obama so important, the Brown-Obama bilateral, as we say? Yeah, it's mainly important because President Obama needs Prime Minister Gordon Brown to strengthen their view that stimulus has to be increased. And you see this great divide at the G20. The U.S. and the U.K. together want more stimulus mm -hmm. money into the global economy. China's resistant, Russia's resistant. And on the other side, you have the European community, which includes France and Germany, and they both want more regulation. They want some kind of global regulatory body. And that's not going to happen, but it's likely, since we've seen partly the communique, at least the draft communique come out, that there will be some kind of compromise between those two positions. And we know that Nicolas Sarkozy, president of yes. France, has even threatened to walk from the G20 if there isn't greater regulation yeah. accomplished. How likely is that to happen? That's very unlikely. Uh, Sarkozy is very unpopular back at home. He is most likely trying to appeal to his audience, and they want this not to happen again, this great global downturn. And so they believe that if you can regulate, have some kind of international regulation of hedge funds and derivatives and tax havens, that you can stop this from happening again. There will be a strengthened international oversight committee. So I think you're going to see some success out of that. I don't think you'll see Sarkozy walk. And why are these other countries so opposed to stimulus programs that, like Obama, has implemented? Well, the biggest issue on the G20 in a real way is U.S. and China. And President Obama did, with, with, did meet this morning with the Chinese leader, Hu Jintao. And the basic idea here is that the United States has to reassure China that there won't be inflation in the United States. And that is because China holds $700 billion worth of U.S. Treasury obligations, and they don't want that to devalue. And they're concerned um, that they're, this influx of cash is going to devalue that. Right. They also believe that they've been careful about their economy. The international economic downturn, um, as uh, the president of Brazil, Lula, said, was created by white men uh, with blue eyes. Uh, they believe that this really was created by the United States and so they don't see why they should put money in. There'll probably be some compromise on that front too. Now finally we're seeing these images of thousands of protesters Absolutely. in London. What's the significance there and what is it they're demonstrating against? Well this is basically the same protesters or similar protesters that have gone to climate change protests and International Monetary Fund and the basic idea here is that those are organizations, well, at least the IMF is an organization that favors the rich countries. One of the things that probably will come out of this G20 meeting is also a reform of the IMF where China's contribution is reflected in its vote, at least in the coming years. The protests have gotten really large, and that is because of the economic downturn. This has had very serious effects, obviously, in London and in England itself. And the OECD, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, has predicted 
25 million more jobs lost at the, by the end of 2009 and a 4.3 reduction in the global economy. So the protesters are justified. It's not a protest against President Obama it's a pres or e any of the individual leaders. It's a protest against the U.S. policies where they perceive the, the global downturn started and against the United States itself. I think President Obama walks away from this with a win. How so? What do you think he has to accomplish for people to say it was a success? Well, he's already accomplished the U.S.-Russia. He will right. accomplish some of the U.K. assistance in Afghanistan. Uh, he has directed Secretary of State Clinton to at least uh, have Richard Holbrooke talk to the Iranians. And he comes back with reform and trade. The other final piece on the G20 mm -hmm. agenda is to make sure that the world doesn't begin protectionist policies and close down trade, which really sparked the last Great Depression. So he's almost already walked away with the things he needs to to win. He's enormously popular, popular in Europe and in the United States, and people don't blame him for the downturn. So he's really, he is in many ways, more than any of the other leaders at the G20, he's the voice of change. Right. Well, thank you so much, Pamela Falk. If you'd like to read sure, more about Ms. Falk's analysis, you can head to the World Watch blog right here on cbsnews.com.